Hey you guys, so I really haven't been on this channel much and I'm just coming back now and I thought today is a great day to kind of catch up and tell you guys about all the things that's been going on as well I have a lot of vlogs and stories and all that to tell you so I was thinking where should I start first of all I hope everyone's doing really well staying safe and that your 2021 has been amazing it's been a great year for me and a great year for my career and I'm so excited for the year 2022 also i got a new phone so my filming is looking much better and my next step would be to get a good camera so i can start youtubing properly for you guys on horizontal mode but yeah so i thought i would tell you guys more about my story of how i came to mumbai and you know the details of what it takes in this industry and the details of what it takes in the pageant world as well because as you guys know i was doing pageants at the beginning of my career and got quite of experience over there as well so yeah i thought today is a great day to start and by starting i thought i would tell you guys about my miss india experience from my training to my audition to the zonal which i went through in 2019 and yeah it was only a zonal but still i got to see the insides of you know how a pageant is and i met everyone from the miss india team i had to do all the shopping and all the preparations so definitely i can give you guys some insights into your pageant journeys now okay where do i start this is so exciting and i really have to backtrack because i must have been just 22 or 23 at the time of the 2019 miss india south zonal and south auditions and i remember at the time that i started i didn't know one thing about pageants so basically i came from bangalore and i was only thinking of doing modeling i had done my first tv commercial in bangalore and i came to mumbai for the purpose of modeling so I was working in an office job for two years and at the same time doing my auditions, looking for agencies. Finally, I found an agency, started working and then slowly, slowly, I met this talent training agency called Coco Berry Academy. So Coco Berry Academy is run by Alicia and Anjali Rout. And I heard a lot of good things about them as well. You know, I knew girls that had gone through there and become Miss Indias. So I was wondering, you know, I want to get trained and what is all this training about, you know, and I knew that those girls who had gone through their academy were doing well in their work, you know, and they got a lot of fame. So my idea was, let me try out this academy and, you know, it will help me to start my modeling career. And I was not thinking at all about pageants because, you know, I really needed help in starting to model and I didn't even know how to ramp walk or how to do the basic stuff like hair, makeup and styling. So I actually went to Coco Berry to learn ramp walk and I must have been there for 15, 20 days of training. Uh, in my time, we had to pay a certain amount to get into the academy. I think now the amount has increased. So I remember I didn't have any family backing helping me. I had nobody to, you know, help me in my modeling career and dreams. So I literally did one TV commercial over here for Rajni Gandha Silver Pearls or something like that. And I made 25K, 25,000, and I had saved up a bit more. And I took my whole savings and put it into Coco Berry Academy's training. And, you know, they were very sweet to me. They were very understanding that I was, you know, living alone in this city and just starting out for the first time. So I felt they were a very supportive community. And I was coming from an agency, my very first agency. I had a very bad experience with them. And Coco Berry to me seemed like a safe haven and a much better agency than where I was coming from. So I was too excited, you know, and I remember I got there on day one wearing a very simple plain black outfit with some very simple heels. I don't even think my heels were proper ramp heels. And I remember I was like two minutes late and Alicia ma'am was there, you know, being very strict with her students and talking about ramp walk. And I stood in the back like like so amazed and everything to me was amazing and you know everything in this city was so amazing so i remember seeing alicia she was like sparkling and glowing and i was like wow it's alicia around you know and i was like in that level you know and then she was very strict very nice but very strict and we treated her like a teacher and she started teaching us so i remember just taking everything very seriously you know in my coco bear training every day i was there on time fully dressed in my makeup you know ready to learn and i remember that anjali and alicia really liked that about me you know that i was just eager to learn and i was very very focused 
so you know i kind of got a lot of respect for them and they treated us all like you know their children extended children they're like i don't know you feel like it's a kind of home and because you know both of them are parents as well and have families and we're all from different cities we were all teenagers and young girls and they just treated us like it was a home you know so we got food we made friends uh they were great mentors and role models for us you know and i really looked up to alicia like wow i want that walk and i want to be just like her and i want to dress like her and you know when anjali route talks anjali is so well spoken and she can win any pageant she walks into so i met anjali route and i was like wow i want to speak like that and you know i just joined this academy for the purpose of ramp walk learning ramp walk but i realized there were so much more things that i could take away from here like public speaking hair and makeup how to style myself we met celebrities like puja hegde and you know a lot of celebrities bharat ji came to teach us styling sidan sir came to teach us nutrition so i came away from that academy instead of learning ramp walk i learned everything but most importantly i learned how to speak really strongly on a mic so you know we had a whole pageant round and in my batch there was suman rao and adlin castellino and me so i think i made fourth place in the kokaway pageant like i did not get a crown but i got the best student title because i was too studious everything i was writing down every small thing i was learning and you know taking a lot of tips and giving my 100% every day so i know that lisa mam and anjali saw that and they really loved that about me that i was just their 100% And you know when I walked on the catwalk in their academy Alicia Mam was like I see something in you and you know can I sign you as a model so that's how I started doing my catwalks and all but at the same time you know every day we would do question answer for pageants and Anjali Mam would give us a long list of questions and we'd have to back to back answer them you know I can maybe do a YouTube video on what kind of questions are asked in pageants and how I would answer them Uh that's going to be a very interesting video for you guys and I actually have some questions written down so that might be fun but yeah just telling you guys a story so every day we had to get up and answer a new set of questions and Anjali ma'am made sure we do it every day so I remember that I was just answering from my heart you know I'm already a very compassionate person and you know very intelligent very caring well I think I'm intelligent but I'm very caring you know very hard working so that just naturally comes out in the way that I talk and i already have stage experience so i was very used to talking on mic and in the proper tone of voice and you know slowly so people could understand so anjali mam was like acha she's a good speaker also so at the end of my training i was just thinking of being a model and the miss india auditions were coming up and anjali rao told me listen i think that you can get into miss india and you can be a state winner so why don't you please try and which state are you from So I told her ma'am my dad's from Tamil Nadu. So if I try for Miss India I can try from Tamil Nadu. And she told me yeah that's great you know the competition in Tamil Nadu is very less. Now I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks and you know inside story hacks which I don't know if I'm allowed to say it but because I'm not doing pageants anymore I think it's fine and you know everyone's allowed to speak from their heart and you know just get closure and stuff. So whatever I'm saying if it's not the right thing to say I'm so sorry I didn't mean to offend anyone. I'm just speaking my story and the way that I saw it, the way I experienced, the way that I felt. So yeah, I, I may not be right on everything, but it's definitely an opinion. So Anjali Mam was like the competition in Tamil Nadu is a little less right now. So why don't you try from there? Because you will surely get in, you know, with your speaking skills and all that. So I was like, sure, ma'am, I can try for that. But I told her, I was like, honestly, Anjali Mam, I don't know anything about pageants. And she was like, Anjali, you're good. We've trained you, and you're very confident. so just go for it and you know in my heart when i left the academy i had a lot of hopes and dreams and goals because they make you feel that way you know every day speaking that list of questions about what you can do for society what you feel is right the things in the world that you should change you talk about those topics every day so you feel very very motivated and ready to do something big for your nation for society etc so that is the way that pageant training helps you is that it literally motivates you from your heart because every day you're grilled on these questions so it becomes a part of you You know so every day I was answering questions about yeah the poor and how I would take care of you know old people and you know the things I would do for society for the environment blah 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 so that was the kind of things I would say 
And you know, from there, literally in my heart, I felt that yes, if I became a Miss India, I would do something really great for this nation and I would use my voice to encourage, inspire and motivate people. So when I left and when Anjali Ma'am told me this, I got it into my heart that yes, I will be a Miss India and yes, I will get selected. So this is where my whole story starts of the South Zonal pageant and what it took, how much it costed me, what experiences I had, how it affected me emotionally. So if you guys are interested to hear my part of the story, uh, keep listening and I have here some notes. So I'm going to refer to it once in a while. So, okay. Uh, let's start from the Chennai audition. So the audition was in Chennai and like I said, I had no family backing because, you know, it was up to me. This decision to take modeling was completely mine. So my parents were like, you have to make it work. And, you know, we're always there for you if something goes wrong. But financially, I had to manage. So I remember an older sister of mine, I told her about my Miss India dream. And she was like, you know what? I think that you should go for it and you really can win. So let me help you. So my older sister actually helped me to book my tickets to Chennai and she helped me to book a hotel as well. I had just left home. I didn't know how to book hotels or, you know, I'd barely taken any flights. So it was a very big experience for me also. And I remember that there was a lot to do for the way you dress. So the cocktail dress that I bought for the Miss India audition was around 2000 rupees. For me, that was a lot at that time. And I did a lot of searching for the right dress. So it must have taken me two days. I can show you guys the place in Bandra where I found my pageant dresses on another video. I will do that on another YouTube video. But I bought my pageant dress from Bandra here in Mumbai and I, it's still working for me three years later. It's still fitting me perfectly and it's an amazing dress. So yeah, it cost me like 2000 rupees and I had a pair of heels from Catwalk. I've just sold those heels on my thrift page, but they were very, very high, beautiful satin heels. And I remember I went equipped with this and, you know, I was I wore some kind of kurti for the flight and I had already met the Times people. I forgot to tell you guys this. When I auditioned, the Times people from Times Tower called me there for a meeting first before the audition. So, yes, I am revealing some little secrets here. So since I got trained from Coco Berry before the audition for the Tamil Nadu, uh, Miss India, etc., Times actually called me to the building for a meeting. So the person working there at the time was Devika. I forget her last name. Devika was there and she took my meeting and I wore that same black cocktail dress. No, actually I wore one of Alicia Mam's dresses and I did a very glamorous makeup and, you know, curled my hair and everything and I went to Times Tower. So I remember that Devika told me and actually the reason I got called to Times Tower for a meeting was because that during our Coco Berry finale, you know how Coco Berry, it has like a pageant at the end of the training, like a mock pageant to, you know, test your skills. So on that finale, Devika from Times was one of our judges. So we had a very big judge in our session. And I remember she loved Suman, she loved Adeline and she loved my face. So Devika came to me and I didn't do well on the question answer round in the Coco Berry pageant, but Devika came to me and she was like, listen, Anjali, your body's perfect. You don't need to work on it. And she turned me towards the mirror and she said, look at your face. And I said, what ma'am? I didn't feel there was anything special about me at that time because I just left home and you know, nobody told me that I was going to make it in this industry or anything. So Devika turned me towards the mirror and she really motivated me and Devika ma'am, if you ever watch this, thank you so much. It meant a lot to me. She turned me towards the mirror and she said, Anjali, look at your face. We can do so much with your face. Just up your performance a bit and you can really make it. And I never heard that there was something different or glamorous about me until Devika said it. Then I got a lot of hope and a lot of confidence in my heart and till this day it is there. So thank you so much, ma'am. Anyway, so she told me that I have a, a good future in pageants or in modeling. So I got very motivated. And, um, you know, then I went to the Times Tower for that meeting and she again told me, yes, be there for the South auditions. And I think she told me things to work on. I saw Manakshi Chaudhary in that same building and she said, hey, this is Anjali. She's going for Miss India Tamil Nadu. And Manakshi looked at me and she was like, OK, nice. And, you know, she was literally thought maybe I could. I don't know what she thought, but I remember seeing her there. And I think Gayatri was there, but I didn't really see her much anyway. 
some backstories gossip so i started i got on the plane to chennai for the chennai audition and i was wearing a very simple kurta no makeup and i was looking very not great and to my horror on the same flight devika was there a judge was there for the south audition and i was no makeup bland face and everything so guys when you go on the flight to your audition if the miss india auditions are live this time always wear your makeup even if you think no one's watching even if you're going for a walk you know in mumbai and bandra you never know where you meet the key people and the judges so i met my judge on the flight when i was not in makeup and i went oh and she saw me and we both smiled and then like when i got off the flight she said hi anjali i remember she said hi anjali when i got off the flight i rushed to the bathroom let my hair down i didn't even have makeup in my carry on bag i was that new and you know i took let my hair down i washed my face and i looked fresh so she met me and she saw me with no makeup and we were both standing very awkwardly to pick up our bags you know from the baggage belt and i made a joke i was like hi ma'am well at least you know what i look like without makeup and she smiled at me she was like i'll see you at the audition so i was like yes so guys one thing you should know about me which i think you already know from you know supermodel of the year is that i am so competitive you know i will literally push everyone aside just to get what i want when it comes to a competition and i don't even realize it it's the way that i am i'm so competitive i'm like dog eat dog kind of thing which you can't even imagine seeing me so not in a bad way i'm just so focused and i try to outperform everyone and most of the time i do but you know sometimes there's a mistake and you know because i'm so focused but anyway i'll get to that part so audition time now i got my hotel i remember i was in chennai alone for the first time so i ate biryani i was staying at a very nice guest house and i just enjoyed my hotel stay and i remember that i played some really sexy motivational music in my hotel room and i wore my catwalk heels and i must have walked for an hour practice my ramp walk for an hour literally guys and i was sweating i was in my dress and i'm sweating it out practicing you know i even imagined so listen to this uh devika ma'am gave me a clue about my pageant ramp walk so she said when i walked for her in kokobay academy she was like Anjali, I like to walk, but there's no fire in your face. So I said, "Ma'am, what do you mean?" She was like, "You didn't look in love." I was like, "Huh?" And she said, "What I mean is that when you're walking the ramp in your pageant, I want you to imagine that the love of your life is in front of you, and you're walking to him. You know, with all that love and with all that attitude and with all that X factor." And then I understood. I was like, "Acha." and at that time i had a really cute crush at that time in miss india so i thought okay this was literally my trick in the audition so i put that guy on the judges panel and through the whole audition i was seeing him and walking because literally seeing the judges i was not feeling that attraction and that x factor you know whatever you need so this was my uh hack and tip that i put that really hot guy I had a crush on i put him in the judges seat and every time i walked i was giving a lot of fire and sass and you know if you see my audition video that was my hack and this guy doesn't even know he'd be so flattered but anyway that was my hack and i nailed the audition guys so back to the story i told you i'm very competitive <laughs> so um back to the story i was in my hotel room i practiced in the mirror and now i practiced like i was looking at my crush so i walked for like an hour in my heels giving all the right poses you know right attitude in my dress and i was sweating it out and you know that's the kind of dedication i put into this field so yeah next day i remember it was 5 a.m. when i woke up and oh that day also the day before the audition i also did a makeup trial on myself so i did my full makeup to see okay this is the makeup i will do tomorrow at the audition i did the full thing like full base lashes eyeliner everything and you know lip gloss i put a lot of lip gloss at uh, times people want to see a lot of gloss in your auditions and stuff so i was always in gloss So I remember I did that full makeup the day before just to try it out and I tagged Cocoberry and they were like look at our talent they are so dedicated that they're practicing the day before I remember that so now that I'm talking everything's coming back even the funniest stuff So um yeah 
Next day, I woke up at four in the morning and guys, when I try to curl my hair, that is a disaster. Now my hair is usually curly, like it's naturally wavy on the end, but proper, you know, glam curls, I cannot do it no matter how much I try. So I had to go to a salon. I remember the salon was in walking distance from the hotel and I booked uh, them to curl my hair. It was like eight in the morning now. I think it was seven or six actually. So they curled my hair in the salon and I went back to my hotel room and I did my full makeup, like glam lips, this, that. Then we had to go to the venue in a different outfit, not in the cocktail dress. So there were two rounds in my time. There was a shorts and spaghetti round. So I had some really hot, nice body hugging high waist shorts. And I think I had a white spaghetti. Sorry, I was, uh, <laughs> I think I had a white spaghetti, then those catwalk heels. And one tip that I did was I took highlighter, like a silver highlighter, and I highlighted my whole body, what was showing. So I highlighted my shoulders, my collarbone, this, my legs, full legs in front were highlighted, then my cheekbones. And so when I walked the ramp, I was shining in a good way. Like my body was looking toned and glamorous and very dewy. And everyone was like, whoa, look at her legs and all that. So I literally highlighted my whole body. If you see in the audition ramp walk, this whole part is just looking dewy and glam, you know? So I did that. I know guys, I forgot. So, ha, huh, I'll tell you this in some time because I remember now it happened after the audition. So I remember when I walked into the audition, I knew in my mind, like first impression is your last impression. So when I walked in, it was at Phoenix in Chennai, Phoenix Market City. I was like, from the second I walk in, I will look like the winner. So my hair was done. I was in my heels, you know, from the cab coming out into this Phoenix. And I remember my hair was blowing and I came in with a suitcase. And I know the judges were sitting there like before it started. And the judge saw me and he made this face like, huh? And from that look in his eyes, I was like, I won. You know, I already won before even doing the audition. See, this is the person I am. And then getting into the pageant, it's a problem for pageant people because they want a lot of humility. <laughs> so yeah, but this is who I am. I can't change it. I've born to be competitive like that. So second I walked in, the judge was like, uh-huh. And I was like, I won. So, you know, I just maintained that attitude throughout the whole day. And, you know, I went into that hair and makeup area. Other girls had arrived. I was saying hi to everyone. I was talking. And, you know, one thing we learned at Coco Berry was be nice to each and every person because they send a lot of spies backstage to see who are the girls who are not nice, you know, to the cleaners and to the maids, etc. So when you go into a pageant, be nice to the maids, be nice to the waiters, be nice to the hair and makeup people because you don't know who is a spy and who is seeing, you know, your attitude and your actions and the way you talk backstage and never ever curse in a pageant or raise your voice or start a fight. Um, that's just off the topic, but yeah. So I got backstage, I was saying hi to everyone. Now there was one girl there who we'd even competed in the modeling world and I don't know, she wasn't a friend of mine. Like she had maybe bitched about me a bit in Mumbai. And you know, I, I didn't love her. I won't say I didn't like her, but I wasn't fond of her. So she was competing with me. Then my competition got even higher. And I was like, I have to do this. I have to do this because now someone I know is here and the competition just got that much more. So you guys don't even realize, but you know, when a girl is in hair and makeup and dress and heels, they're literally going to war on that catwalk. A pageant is like a war, guys, uh, to see who is going to win. And girls put a lot of effort into it. And that's why they get very emotional, you know, at the end. So, yeah, um, this is my take. It's very candid. And, you know, that's it. It's the way that I feel. So, yeah. So I remember, you know, I had, I think, number 13. I think my number was number 13 on this plate. And I was watching everyone and you know, as the other girls go out and give their uh, question answer and the intro, uh, listen to every question answer, listen to every answer also. So I could tell which answers the judges did not like, which intros the judges did not like just from being backstage. So listen and see everything, you know, then Coco Berry told us, listen, keep your intro in a one minute only. 
because judges don't want to hear you go on for two, three, four minutes about your family and your dog and your hobbies and your cat. So just keep it to who you are, what you believe in, and you know, smile through the whole time. Talk genuinely from your heart and smile. The minute the judges feel that you have memorized your introduction, they'll be like, no, you know? So don't make it like, hey, you know, memorized thing. They just don't like it. Secondly, when you introduce yourself, don't be like, hi, myself is Anjali. Myself does not, is not correct English grammar. Hi, my name is Anjali. That is how you have to introduce yourself. So guys, work on your grammar and get it properly, you know, approved by a senior before you give your pageant introduction because they're really looking for good English speaking or, you know, whatever language you're speaking in, give it in the proper grammar because they're looking for well-spoken women and they don't want anyone who, you know, can't piece their sentences together. Secondly, these uh, times people, they don't want to hear that this pageant has been your childhood dream. They really don't care what dreams you have. They care what you can do with the dream. So don't come onto the stage and be like, oh, it's been my dream to be a Miss India since I was five. So please let me in. Nobody's going to do that. Okay. So literally every girl who said it's my dream, they did not get selected. What are you going to do with your dream? What are you going to do with what you feel? They want to know that. Okay. So yeah, that's it. So if you watched my intro, it was very humble. It was very from my heart. And I spoke about my family in India. We're very family oriented and people love when you talk about family. So talk about your family and talk about your dreams. And you know, they love that. You can talk about your struggles as well, but make it seem like you're a winner. Don't give a struggle story and be like, yeah, I struggled. So here I am. Don't give that. If you're giving a struggle story, be like, yeah, I had this issue and, you know, I faced this and I want it and I'm here today, you know. So that's the kind of person they want to see is someone who's an overcomer and someone who's very positive and well spoken. So it was finally number 13's turn to go. And my whole body was full of electricity. And I remember before going on the stage for the audition, I said a prayer from my heart and I was like, God, I want to do this and I'm asking you to help me and I really want to be your voice when I go out there as well and speak about the right things. So please help me and if I get selected, you know, it's I'm only going to use this for good. So I went out with that attitude like this is going to be for good and I'm going to make it and I was so competitive and you know, went there, took my pose and held it and immediately made that eye contact, you know, with the judges and my crush was there, you know, super hard and just looking at me and I walked to him and gave him my whole walk. So I knew the walk was killer. And I did this hair flip as well, which was really amazing. But yeah, so I gave that and then, you know, we did the shorts walk. Then we did the cocktail dress walk. Then in the cocktail dress, we had questions and answers. Now, it's been a really long time. I don't remember the questions and answers so much. I kind of remember mine, but you guys can just see my audition video here on this uh, on YouTube because my all my question and answers are here. And yeah, I talked about my family and, you know, how we grew as a family and how my family's inspired me. And that's it. Yeah. And I told them, you know, even if I don't get selected for Miss India, you will see me growing somewhere else because I just love this industry and I want to grow here. So, you know, yeah, I just gave from my heart. I didn't give any big speech about my dreams and all. And that was it. So we had to keep on walking throughout the day. The audition went from like 11 a.m. till 4 p.m. We had maybe a short, I don't even think we had a lunch break. There was no lunch break. We had juice and I think fruits or snacks backstage. And that's all we had till 4 p.m. So there was no lunch break. And we were hungry and running on that hunger, you know. So already a lot of girls got out of the audition. They did not get selected and they kept narrowing the list down. And I remember that Anukriti Vas was one of our uh, judges and Chitania Rao, I'm so sorry if I'm saying it wrong, was another one of our judges. And I don't remember the second, uh, third one, it was a lady. So they were very sharp just watching us, you know, and I remember Devika Ma'am was there that day as well. And she took my Polaroids, you know, with no makeup. She took everyone's Polaroids backstage. And I just felt a lot of hope from Devika ma'am. I saw she was smiling at me and I just took a lot of hope from that. I really loved her and she was a great support to me in the pageant. Not intentionally or, you know, unfairly, but she just looked at me with a lot of hope. And, you know, through that, I gained confidence. So, yeah, 
we did it and you know my other competitors were you know giving really good stories about how it was their dream but i just stayed true to my story and you know who i am as a person i didn't change who i am as a person for this you know audition so we kept going kept going and i'm smiling like so big so electric i just kept going ha huh. so in the audition i remembered they asked so anjali what are your hobbies so or do you do anything else aside from modeling because at that time i was already modeling so i said uh yes sir in Mumbai, I have a job as a singer as well. Because I used to sing in ITC near the airport, I had a job singing there every Thursday. So I was like, yes, sir, I have a job as a singer in Mumbai as well. Now, when you tell times people or pageant people that you have a hobby or, you know, some kind of skill, be prepared, they will ask you to perform on the spot. So if you say you're a dancer, like I dance Bharatnatyam, they might be like, show us some steps, you know? So I said, I'm a singer immediately he was like sing something for me so don't show surprise on your face just be smiling so i was like sure sir what do you want me to sing so um he said well i like adele can you sing something from adele so uh i was like sure sir i'll sing something from adele so i got the words to someone like you and because of my singing job i know a lot of lyrics for songs like any song pretty much lyrics i'll give you at least two paragraphs so i started singing someone like you and from my performing background you know when i was a kid and i used to perform i knew not only look at the judges look at the audience as well so there was a big audience on my right side and every time i walked they were whistling for me so every time i walked I'd look at the audience and then look at the judges. So the judges saw, Acha, this girl's not only, you know, focused on us, she's interacting with a massive crowd. So because of that, they liked me. So every time I got out onto the stage, audience, then judges, and that was a big plus point. So I started singing Someone Like You, and I looked into the audience, I was smiling at them, I was making eye contact, then again looked at the judges. So eye contact when you're on a mic is so important. So they were all like, oh, and I knew, I knew I got the part. Like it was not hard as well, that difficult. It was difficult, but I wasn't like losing my mind. Like, oh my God, do I get it? Will I not get it? I was pretty confident. And you know, guys, why I was so confident was that a lot of girls, when they came to audition, they arrived in chapel and, you know, off colored clothes, like one orange top, one pink shorts. You have to come in blue, white and a cocktail dress, you know, and some of the cocktail dresses were blingy. You need a plain black dress that's body fitted. Some of the girls wore, you know, a dress with a very puffy skirt where you can't see the figure that does not work in pageants. So just from seeing the clothes that other girls brought, I was like, Acha, you know, judges judge you big time. So you can't come in front of them in a blingy New Year's kind of dress, you know, on a pageant. Or you can't come in, you know, like a puffy skirt for, you know, pageant because you need to show your figure. So yeah, and you need to be a little sexy as well. Don't come in a turtleneck and all the way down to your knees, you know, covered everywhere. So I made sure my dress had an X factor, like, you know, nice sleeve, nice cut. There was a little slit. So it looked really, really glamorous. So I knew from these things, like my game was pretty strong. So yeah, I did that Someone Like You song. They were like, thank you, Anjali. And I think that was pretty much the last question. Uh, they did give us like a quick rapid fire questions. Like every girl had again, two, three more questions later on. I really don't remember the questions, but I do have some pageant questions with me and I can do that on a different video. So yeah, we did that. And then now there was like seven shortlisted girls. So there was me, my competition, and of course, Shruti and Rubaya were there as well. I remember everyone's names. Wow. So yeah, we were all standing smiling so big so brightly barely blinking we you, you cannot stop smiling now i'm getting so excited i'm like stammering you cannot stop smiling and you know my back was properly straight never arch your back never come out of that t pose so my legs were like killing me in that heel my back was hurting everything's hurting right because your body has to be super tight in that pose with your head up and we were standing like that for half an hour while the judges were you know, giving us their ratings and all. So I remember my whole body was gonna start shaking because the heels were high. Then I'm in that T pose, which is putting more weight on my back leg. Then, you know, my spine is eight them straight, as straight as can be, and my head is up and I'm smiling, you know? So it was so tough. And you can't look nervous also. 
and my jaw was hurting everything was hurting let me see my notes once right so then the big moment came where they selected girls so i remember that uh we i guess had gone backstage for a bit of refreshment and um now the judges made the decision and anukriti vas came backstage to give to us the final decision so we were all sitting there i was sitting like this and just watching her you know and my hands were like this i remember so clearly and um she called out the numbers so she called out shruti shruti started crying which is very beautiful because she worked for a long time for this pageant and she announced rubaya like backstage on no mic nothing she was just giving numbers and then i remember my competition was looking at her like was it me was it me and she shook her head and she looked at me and she said and number 13 and i started smiling and that was all i could do you can't shout or whistle or anything because you're in a pageant <laughs> i used to be very boyish so i whistle and shout and all but i was just like e i made it so yeah this video is very different guys you're seeing more of my personality here so yeah so i hadn't made it and you know she was like so girls get ready we'll announce you now on the stage and you know you have to do a final walk for us and some press videos so now we came out as winners you know and three of us were standing and i gave my full glamour hair toss and you know looking at my crush and all my tips and techniques were there you know in my walk and i guess some of the other girls were looking jealous also but now okay guys so i had dreamed and worked till this point and i did not imagine what comes after this point so that was my i won't say mistake because i was a very young kid just out of home i didn't know what to expect you know and maybe i didn't do pageant research also so i didn't realize that suddenly you become a public figure and suddenly there was seven to eight press cameras from different newspapers in chennai and they were all in front of me asking me about my family asking me about my life asking me about my education and you have to give beautiful answers you know which will represent a nation so i didn't realize that much responsibility comes on you directly after being crowned as a top 3 for your state so suddenly i'm facing eight nine cameras and they're all going flash 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 and i felt small inside outside i'm still smiling like yes giving the answers but inside i was like oh my god the whole state is looking up to me now and i have to answer very smoothly and i didn't realize i'd become so out in public because i'm a bit of a shy person i can go out and perform for a few hours you know or for a day but to live in a state of performance is something that i was not ready for and still today i don't love it so much so I didn't realize that so much responsibility comes on your head in a pageant. So that's where I started getting a little, you know, underconfident. Not underconfident, but worried. So I started getting a little worried when all the cameras came on me and they were asking me very personal questions and nobody's there to give you the answer. You give the answer and if you say the wrong thing, you're screwed. So, you know, I was like, okay, and I was not ready for that. So it was done. I remember going to the washroom and I made an Instagram story and I was like I made top 3 I'm in and I never was so happy in my life until that moment when I finally did something for myself with no family backing nobody telling me they believed in me nobody supporting me I went I did it and I was proud of myself so that was one of the happiest moments for me and I remember going back to the hotel and suddenly my Instagram was flooded with followers with comments with messages and i was answering everyone and i remember i made a close friend story and i said guys i'm really nervous what just happened now i'm suddenly in front of the camera in front of the limelight and i was not prepared for this like i don't know what to do so i made a joke like that on my close friends but that's what i was feeling and you know i just wish someone would have guided me through that uh a first coming out into the limelight now it's been a long time and i can do it now but at that time when i just left home at the age of 22 i was very innocent and you know unprepared to be just thrust onto a stage like that so anyway uh let's see so yeah your whole life is going to change if you get selected for your state and be prepared to talk a lot 
I don't know, talk to press, talk to fans, talk to kids. Everyone's gonna come to you with a lot of love and a lot of hope and you just can't let them down. So another tip I can give you guys is during, after you get selected and even before, uh, Times Group will look at your Instagram and social media. So make sure you keep posting. And what Times Group likes is they like girls who can become actresses and very supermodels and who can do a lot of work in the fashion industry because it will make them look good. So Times really gets interested if you're posting modeling, shoots, fashion shows, everything. So I remember that I was advised to keep on posting photo shoots, fashion, uh, keep talking to my fans, keep answering messages, uh, do a lot of social work. So I had planned that one meal a day, uh, you know, beauty with a purpose. And I will tell you guys about this later, uh, what actually happened with this one meal a day. So yeah, so I had to keep my Instagram constantly going, you know, with a new post every two days or every day and constantly making stories. Then, you know, Coco Berry gave me a lot of shoots to make myself look more glamorous so that times would, you know, like me even more. So yeah, all this was going on and I had to maintain my social media a lot as well as my cause. So I can tell you guys, we all needed a cause. And from my heart, I exactly knew what to do because in Mumbai, you know, there's a lot of poor people who are begging and stuff and they don't look like they've eaten in a long time. So I was going out quite regularly and, you know, I'd buy a bag of atta for like 50 rupees, 100 rupees, and I'd give it to a poor person every day when I went out at least one bag. So when I, you know, got the position of top three, I remember I got a bag of atta. I was staying in Versova. And there was two parents and a child on the side of the road sleeping. So I went to them and I said, uh, Bhagwan Aapka Kaliye, I guess, which is like, this is from God. I don't remember the, the sentence I used, but I was kind of trying to say, God bless you, as I gave them this package. And um, sorry, guys, if I got the Hindi wrong, huh? It was a long time back. So um, yeah, then I gave it to her and she was very happy and I asked her, can I click a selfie with you? So she said yes. And you know, these people don't like clicking selfies. So I felt a little bad, like why I'm clicking a selfie with this, you know, lady. But anyway, she awkwardly took it with me and I posted it on my social media and through one picture. Now I'm going to spoil it a bit for you guys. Through one picture, I earned the Rajni Gandhi Silver Pearls Goodness um, Sponsorship Award. If you guys can imagine, I was not so, um, you know, dedicated to my cause that I was doing it every time I went out. I might have given around five bags of food and just through one picture and a good cause, I got a big voucher from Rajni Gandha when other girls in the pageant had a whole organization or, you know, charity against bullying, against certain things. And their actual charities, which have been running for two years, did not get any award. But my one picture with one bag of Atta got 25,000 sponsorship award. So I felt, how is this fair? Like I didn't do much yet. I got an award and you know, that was in my mind. So anyway, that was little going forward and coming back. So um, I'm going back to my getting ready now for the zonal. So the zonal was coming up. I kept doing my workout. Also, Times likes it if you're maintaining your fitness. So I was posting about my fitness very regularly and going to the gym. Um, then I remember they gave us a long list of things to carry, like so many dresses, so many heels, so much gym wear, these products and makeup, and I didn't have anything. So again, I spent a lot in makeup. And I went to Coco Berry and I said, ma'am, I don't have any of these clothes and I don't have the money to get it also. You know, at that time, I just started modeling. What do you expect me to do? So, uh, you know, Coco Berry actually lent to me like 15 uh, pairs of clothing, 15 outfits or maybe 20, 25 outfits even. Uh, you need a bunch of stuff in pageants. You know, every half day you should change your dress. You should always be very fashionably styled and, you know, accessories, rings, hair, makeup, lashes, heels, you know, uh, I had a big, you know, the biggest size of suitcase. I had that and it was packed. At the same time, we had to plan a talent round. 
So naturally from childhood, not from childhood, but from my teenage years, I've been belly dancing. You know, it was a hobby. I learned it from YouTube. So I thought I can do belly dancing. So I had some outfit with me for belly dancing. We shot it in a friend's house. Me and a friend shot, you know, a talent dance video where I didn't even choreograph. I just did my normal thing. You know what any belly dancer does? You just freestyle on the music. So they liked it. And I was going to be the first girl who did belly dance in Miss India. Um, so then they asked me, you have to get an outfit. Now again, the outfit which I took to the zonal costed me like five, six thousand rupees. Now, if you're adding up this amount of money, it's a lot of money I spent. So if you guys have that kind of, you know, sponsorship, great. But I didn't and I ran a huge loss in the pageant, you know, um, and didn't really get too much from it also, but never mind. But I'm just saying I ran a loss. So when you ladies are, you know, looking to go into a pageant, realize that, you know, you're going to spend a lot and be prepared because I got shocked by all these things and it affected my performance. So after the pageant, uh, times people told Alicia that I needed to work on my hair because my hair was this black color and they didn't like it. So I remember having to go and dye my hair and that cost me around 5,000 rupees and nobody was paying for it, I was paying for it. As well, I had to do nail extensions twice in the pageant and at that time it was 2,000 rupees where I was going. So again, I spent 4,000 on just nails. So four and five, 9,000 on just personal, you know, care and all that. Then again, more on makeup, lashes, outfits, heels. I was spending a lot, you know, without getting anything from the pageant at that time. So I was under a lot of pressure and I was like just a girl who left home, barely started out in Mumbai and suddenly I have to pay for all these things. And I was like, am I ready for this? Can I do this? You know, it's a lot of money and I just didn't have it at that point. So yeah, I was under a lot of pressure like that. So yeah, I remember they asked me to buy a very expensive belly dance outfit. So I went to four bungalows and there's, you know, a shop where you get exotic outfits. And I got a skirt. I got my belly dance belts from Bandra. I got a really nice top on the belly dance top. They didn't want it to be sexy. They wanted it to be covered because it's Miss India Tamil Nadu. So I got a properly covered top, but very glamorous and, you know, ble beads and blingy stuff and, you know, full earrings, rings, everything. I sourced myself and I was so proud of it. And again, the day I was walking for like the whole afternoon and I was sweating and, you know, tired and hungry and I just got it done. And you know, the stylist was talking with me, the stylist from the Miss India team, and they helped me to get my talent outfit, you know, planned. So now it was time to go. And again, I booked Bangalore flights. So first Chennai flights must have been around five, 6,000, you know, there and back. Then Bangalore flight was again, five, 6,000 there and back. And um, it was a night flight. When I got my flight to Bangalore, now uh, Times told me like, for the finale, you can invite two people. Who would you like to invite? So I told my parents, like, listen, you've supported me my whole childhood and you're the reason that I'm here doing this pageant. So I'd like to invite you to see the finale. So my parents were very excited and now I had more pressure on my head. Like, oh, now my parents will also be there. So I have to really perform well. So you can imagine financial, then um, outfits, then styling, then makeup, which you have to do yourself, then talent video, um, all that came on my head, plus my parents were also watching, plus the whole state and nation were watching me. And you get a lot of pressure from pageant pages as well, because all the pageant pages start posting about you. Like, Anjali is going to win, this, that, this, that, and you should not let any of that affect you. So it started affecting me, and I was like, oh, you know, this was the first time I was seeing this, and you know, three girls competing from the state and pageant pages are talking about us like, no, she will win or she won't because of this. And you know, you can't let it affect you. So I remember when I was flying to Bangalore for the, uh, no, actually when I left the audition in Chennai times, the next day, my picture was on the cover with the other two girls. And you know, there was some interview which we gave some time back or maybe on the audition date. I don't remember. And I was horrified. Again, I am popping some bubbles of, you know, dreams over here. I was horrified because in the newspaper it wrote, Anjali said, I'm coming to Bangalore to take the crown. Not once from my mouth did this statement come out. 
and in the audition i was the most humble loving good girl because that's the way that coco bay trained me to be so i would never out of my mouth say i'm coming to take the crown yes my walk said that i am so confident and i can win but never from my mouth and never did i treat another contestant like hey you know you're not great and i'm going to take the crown from you i never did that to someone so i was like why is the newspaper manipulating things that i never said and putting it out to the whole nation so this is where i started thinking like hmm is it fixed or something like that because i never said this statement and it was in paragraphs uh in quotations anjali said i'm coming to bangalore to take the crown so i felt very worried and i called five six people like hey the newspaper said this and i never said it and you know what are they trying to do what's happening over here and you know they were like don't get worried just focus on your performance so i already had it in my mind like something's little fishy going on and you know i got to bangalore and what happened was that the zonal was starting from 7 a.m. in the morning the next day i did not think to come to bangalore a day early and also my parents were living very far from the venue they couldn't drop me on time you know they might have a problem with the way i had to dress in the pageant so i just went directly to the zonal from mumbai so what happened was i got a night flight and i left mumbai around 4 in the morning and i was tired after packing doing makeup also in a glamorous outfit also and heels in dress and blazer and i reached in the night and you know two three other girls had done the same thing and we all met in bangalore airport and we went together so that was like our first bonding and friendship i think uh, hyderabad had come few girls had come who i knew also so you know we met in the airport and we took a cab together to the otera hotel in electronic city bangalore i still remember i know the second we reached again you're on camera press is there they're filming your outfit your arrival outfit we were going to get graded on the arrival outfit and get points off of that so i knew it had to be so good and immediately smiling talking to everyone yes i'm a beauty queen blah 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 you know it gets a little tiring after some time but anyway so yeah uh we got there and i remember we first had like a briefing of what was going to happen over the next few days and the whole day was on camera so we had the briefing we had breakfast they even watched the way that you eat and you know the things that you serve yourself from the buffet like who even does that but anyway uh they watched the way that you talk during a meal and you know who you're talking with over your meals and all and i'm somebody who you know if i'm performing i like to take 10 minutes to myself so you know they noticed that in between i was a little quiet and i was you know having my food or you know uh sitting quietly at my makeup or something like that so times didn't like it like why is she not interacting and it might have been for 10 15 minutes a day but i'm someone who when i really perform i need 15 minutes to collect like yes okay i'm back you know like that so they didn't get it they were like this girl has an attitude and a lot of drama went on inside but anyway so we had breakfast then we got into the first photo shoot you know which was that glamorous green dress and our glamour shoot basically so we got into the first photo shoot they took our pictures they loved my photo shoot performance i was too confident you know on the photo shoot and they liked that i remember uh what was this choreographer's name was there I don't remember her name now but she's very senior and very well known in this industry. So she was with us for many days and I think she liked me also. Like a lot of people really liked me but maybe I was coming off more as a model than as a beauty queen because again I needed time to myself, you know. I was a little worried by things like finances and you know, normal things. <laughs> so it's okay to talk about it guys. We are all people at the end of the day. So yeah. that happened and then the rest of the days were kind of blur i remember like there were um things we had to go into like talks and stuff like that there were sponsorship meets where you know you hear a talk from blossom culture about beauty and all then she gives you products so we had to go to all of these sponsorship meets where you have to hear their talk and you know meet them click pictures take gifts and vouchers and all that So all that happened I remember I was really stressed out because of my talent. Now the thing with talent is that at my time I don't know what's happening nowadays but in my time talent didn't mean anything. So the girls who performed and had a talent 
don't necessarily win. And girls who have no talent, they can also win. So I wish, I really wish that I would have said, oh, sorry, I can't do anything and focused on my performance because I'm somebody that, you know, can get distracted, not distracted, but I can get stressed out by having to juggle a lot of things. And the talent took a lot of my time and a lot of drama happened in that as well. So um, I remember that we had to wear our talent outfit and perform for a choreographer and two judges, you know, around 3 p.m. around lunchtime. So I played my music. It was, uh, I don't even remember the song now. Is that Milgaye, da, 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 da. You know, that Ashwarya Rai song. So I was dancing that. And um, I came in front of the judges and I gave my very sexy pose in the end. And belly dance is very sensual. So they saw it and I thought like, hey, this is my song. Everything's done and dusted. You know, I already know how to choreograph and it's going to be fine. So I was totally out of stress. Then suddenly they told me, Anjali, your song's getting changed and your choreography is also getting changed. And we had like two days to do it. And I'm not such a professional dancer that, yeah, I can do choreography in two days and, you know, also perform, also give my quest and answer, blah, blah. So I got in a big stress. And, you know, that time I was a 22 year old kid. Now, if you tell me, Anjali, you have choreography in two days, I'll be like, no problem, you know, even on the first day of the pageant, we were all tired because we arrived in the morning, like at six and we took the flight overnight. So it was like 4 a.m. till 6 and none of us slept. So that day one was so tiring in heels and all. We had a lot of sponsorship meets, a lot of, you know, BTS bites to take and all that. Then the next day is when it started getting a little too much. So then we had our talent practice at 6 in the morning. We had to be awake in hair and makeup, in gym wear, in a certain part of that hotel, you know, getting ready to do choreography. Now, I had just started modeling. I was not used to strain or pressure or stress or anything. So, you know, not even call time so much. So I remember when the minute I hit my bed, I was out and I didn't hear my alarm also. And very smartly, these uh, people had put me in the same room as my top contestant from that same state. So I was staying with Rubaya and they could have put me with anyone, but they put you with your contestant to make you a little pissed off, to make you a little uncomfortable, to see how are you gonna react. So I was with her, we didn't love each other again. I won't say I didn't like her, I don't have a problem with her, but I wasn't so comfortable like again living with my contestant because what it means is in your room, when the day is done, you can't let your guard down. Guard is still up, you know, to the night as well. So I was like, oh God, do I ever get a break, you know? And then the next morning, my alarm, I slept through it. Of course, she wouldn't wake me up because I'm her contestant. So why should she tell me that it's time for my, you know, choreography? So I was 10 minutes late. Quickly, I did like some bass, uh, put on my sportswear and I ran to that room and there was a lot of shock on my face. And you know, that times lady did not care. She didn't care that we didn't sleep you know, that we were tired, that we flew through the night and came to Bangalore from Mumbai. She was like, Anjali, I'm putting this down as a very bad record. And I was like, ma'am, please, you know, I miss my alarm, ma'am, and all that. And she was like, I don't care. This is very bad from you. And I was like 10 minutes late. It was like a early morning. Never mind. I'm not going to say this, but I was like, wow, you know, these people really don't care that we flew through the night. We didn't sleep. You know, we barely ate and all that. You know, so did the choreography, I'm not, then he started putting Bollywood steps into it, which is not really something I'm familiar with so much. So again, I was taking stress on the steps. So knowing if you guys know me properly, anyone who's watching this, I practiced my steps for like 30 times, you know, and all the other girls who were in choreography with me, they were also taking a lot of stress because he was giving us very difficult steps and we were all young girls, you know, who just came from home. Like, what do you expect us to do? So we had a lot of stuff to do. Then immediately from there, change, makeup, dress, breakfast, talk to all your contestants and, you know, go into the next thing. Some talk or, you know, some, I think it was ramp walk practice with Alicia. So then Alicia saw me and she had trained me previously. So she saw my face and she was like, Anjali, you're worried. What happened? 
and I remember that I went to the bathroom and cried also like I was stressed out I didn't realize that I came into something like this so Alicia was like actually what happened I was like ma'am nothing and you know I got calls from a few mentors and they were like please don't take stress you know please just focus and I was like but you don't understand they changed my choreography you know uh, I didn't get sleep you know these things are happening and they were like actually just focus so I was like yes now when I over focus during a time of stress I get a bit reserved and you know a bit um, I don't know like a bit not off standish but I'm little too focused and you know it looks like I'm not being outgoing and it looks like I have an attitude but really it at that time it was just that I was stressed and you know I was shielding it from the outside world by being a little quiet so times is like this girl has an attitude and you know she's not talking to her contestants blah 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 so I was talking to them but I wasn't like oh babe I love you I hope you win all that I can do if I'm competing with you yeah but competing I love you and you know I hope we both win or you know the best one wins but I'm not gonna be like oh I love you let's click selfies this that I'm sorry it's like something I was not prepared for um yeah so again guys it's not that i have an attitude it's where i've come it's how i've been raised maybe i'm more of a model than a beauty queen which is why i've stopped doing pageants and you know yeah i'm somebody who's very focused and very down to earth i'm someone who pays my bills you know makes a future and that's it so yeah i'm someone who avoids added stress so this was a lot of added stress for me and i didn't know how to cope with it at that time of course, when I got into supermodel, things changed and I coped quite well. But in this, um, it was very tough. And I think pageants was more tough than supermodel because you have to be too friendly and too polite and too kind, even at a time when you're feeling really low or really scared or really stressed. And you know, how long can you carry that out? You know, for how many days in front of how many cameras, etc. So I just felt like I was being somebody that I'm not. And yeah, that's hard to, you know, keep that up. So anyway, um, that happened. So I'm back to my notes and this video is also coming to a close in about 20 minutes. So stay with me if you're enjoying it. Uh, if you're not, no hard feelings and really no hard feelings to the world of pageants because, you know, all the girls who are winners are beautiful, amazing people with so much drive for the community. But I'm somebody who always had a different way of viewing things and, um, yeah i've always aggressively gone after you know my job my rent my normal life and i found it a little hard to maintain that pageant attitude because maybe i'm more of a model so yeah you know um i at the end of the day i was like why are you making me be someone that i'm not if i'm tired i can say that i'm tired you know if i'm stressed i can be a little stressed but you can't show anything or say anything and i just felt very bottled up honestly um so yeah it carried on and um you know three four days felt like five days felt like a week inside this place with you know no connection to family or anything but i'm carrying on so i was having fun i was having a good time it's not like i wasn't but because i was juggling so many things and i was focused i was a little quiet and that's it so people took that to be attitude and of course to every meal and to every you know time I had to show my face I came fully decked up because you know I had borrowed my outfits from Academy and they were fashion outfits so every outfit was some stunning dress you know some stunning pastel something some pantsuit and every time I was fully in makeup earrings lashes and I looked like a winner already you know and this is what times said Times was like, Anjali is walking like she already won and she hasn't. Why does she have this attitude? And again, like I said, because I was under stress and hiding it. So I was quiet, little quiet, not much. I was still talking, making friends and all. But I was like a little sometimes to myself. And also every time I left my room, I was in a gorgeous outfit with gorgeous makeup and hair done, everything done. So Times was like, why Anjali is dressed like this, walking like this, like an attitude. I don't have an attitude. I was naturally a model and had a model walk, had a model attitude, face, everything was poker and yeah, I'm here to win. So more like a glamorous diva kind of thing. So they said like, why is she acting like this? But that's the way that I act. Even if you see me outside, I will be glamorous and you know, in my outfit, in a zone. That's how to put it. I was in my zone of just being who I am. 
so I can't change that for anyone. So yeah, I was like really well dressed, always in heels. Sometimes the other girls, you know, didn't come dressed like that. So they were like, why is she so extra? And I didn't even realize it was extra. I was literally living my best life, you know, coming as a, you know, properly dressed every time, you know, and just eating with my fork and knife. I was eating, you know, Western breakfast and all, cause that's what I prefer. And you know, they were like, she's very different. They felt I was very different, which is fine. Like everyone has an opinion. And I can't change myself for anyone. So yeah, then came our interview. And I remember going into the interview. This is when I heard a lot of comments right before the interview. So this is one thing, guys, no matter who is saying what about you behind your back in the pageant, because you will hear all of it, you know, from your mentors, from your peers, like, hey, someone said this, someone said this, you know, you're not performing well, or you're showing attitude, or you're not being good to your, you know, contestants. So I heard Everything was dumped in my ear on phone call before I went into the interview by someone who had called me and said, listen, Anjali, this, 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 this is what is being said about you. And, you know, maybe that was a prank call or something, but it really got me down. So don't listen to anyone. You know, if someone's giving you a good advice, take it. But what happened right before my interview was someone called me and said a bunch of negative things back to back and they didn't think how it would affect me and it affected me hugely. Then suddenly I looked in the mirror and instead of seeing a confident winner, I was like, oh my God, people are thinking this about me. Oh my God, I'm not being good to my contestants. And you know, oh my God, I'm acting shy. And suddenly I became more. So never take that on your heart. Just let it go through one ear and out the other. And you know, don't, I'll tell you this part a little later. So yeah, it, Miss India for me was a big thing for my heart because first of all, I spent a lot. Second of all, I really did feel like I could do something great, you know, for society, for my state. And I was so proud and so humble and I really wanted to be the representative and many people wanted me to be. So one thing I made a mistake was that I put all my hope on winning. And what happened was when I didn't win, I was crushed for many months. So never do that also, you know, even if you get into an opportunity, big opportunity, take it as another life experience and just go, you know, like, you know, if I win, it's okay. If I don't win, it's also okay. And make friends and be happy and laugh because I went with so much pressure that, you know, I wasn't even able to enjoy myself so much. So yeah, just take it not lightly, but be happy and, you know, don't make it like, oh my God, this is only thing I have because that's what I acted like, because it was the beginning of my career. So yeah, I mean, I hope somebody learns from this and you know, it helps you to be a better winner or better representative. So anyway, uh, I went into the personal meeting now, personal interview, yeah. And you know, I don't remember what I was wearing. I was wearing some pretty blue dress and again, a different pair of heels. I had three, four heels in this pageant. And now I had all that, you know, garbage dumped on me from that phone call. And now I was a little messed up for at least an hour. I wasn't feeling good. And that was the hour of the personal interview. So I went inside and I sat and suddenly everything was clear from the way people were looking at me to the way my contestants were looking at me. And I was like, oh shit. So, you know, I was sitting there and I was smiling, but I felt so under pressure that I had nothing to say. And that was my fault. So, you know, I was sitting, smiling. I was like, if someone asked me a question, I'd be like, yes, ma'am. And I'd answer it in a one sentence. But in pageants, you need to answer, you know, a little full of an answer, like a, maybe two, three sentences and, you know, be more conversational. So Dia Mirza was there, Anu Ahuja was there, and there was one more, which I don't remember. So I've loved giving this video because it's helping me to kind of, how do you say, vent and, you know, heal as well. Um, so I have somewhere to go right now. So I'm going to finish the personal interview part and kind of leave it on an intermission. And then I'm going to come back on another day with the rest of the story and what happened backstage, what happened on the finale and also question answer because you guys have asked me a lot of questions. So quickly back to the interview, Dia Mirza was there. And I remember, you know, I told that I was German. I was half German and Dia Mirza, I loved her so much. She was the most beautiful, lovely person. Until this day, I wish her nothing but, you know, God's blessings and the best in her life. She 
really inspired me so much you know when i felt out of place and like you know an outcast not really an outcast but everyone around me knew exactly what to do what to say they were speaking hindi you know they were from proper society in india and i've been from many you know too many places and i'm half german so at some point i felt like me and my personality were not fitting in and in the beginning i thought that was going to be good but you know at some point i felt out of place so dear mirza came to me and she was like you know what in the interview she was like i'm also half german and you know i understand where you're coming from and i really like that about you so i really loved her and i was just talking to her now i remember that natasha grover was also in the personal interview and she was not liking me at this point so they were giving a lot of attention to rubaya and she was talking and i knew from living with her she was very different from the person she was in front of the judges in front of the judges she was giving a lot of extra like oh i love this i love that no offense but i kind of saw it for what it is and you know we were all just doing our best in there so i got in there and i was under a lot of pressure and i felt that natasha didn't like me and maybe anu didn't like me either so me when i feel someone doesn't like me i take offense and i feel like a little sad so i should have just been confident but instead i was feeling like a little sad and you know out of place so i didn't have much to say and i guess they didn't like that and basically guys from what happens is when you do your personal interview you get selected from the interview only so be very careful no matter how you're feeling go into that interview with your full heart you know invested with your mind at peace don't take anybody's drama or you know bullshit honestly don't take anybody's trash or you know gossips or anything just go in there with a very grounded attitude good attitude and no matter who you feel doesn't like you who's looking at you what girl next to you is doing drama and giving extra and you know who you feel is being fake don't think about anything think about your heart and who you are and you know that you got here on your own and you're strong enough to talk to anyone and they have to listen to you because yes you are here as well so you know i didn't do well in the personal interview and i came out and from there i was unsure i thought maybe i can still win but i was feeling unsure and uh when my mentors called me i told them like yeah i'm not sure how the interview went and you know that was it so yeah from there i was feeling very different because of that phone call i got you know where i was told that i wasn't doing well and you know a lot of gossip i got on that call which i think that was the reason that and my talent choreography because the talent choreography was too tough but anyways guys i'm going to get back to you on this tomorrow or later in the evening and give you the full rest of the gossip and my story as seen by me and also answer your question answers so i hope this wasn't you know breaking anyone's dreams or offensive to anyone it's just the way that i felt as a young girl in a very different and difficult place and um yeah i hope you enjoyed it and you know that it helps someone who was in my position to know what to do in miss india or any other pageant so stay tuned guys for part 2 of my miss india experience where i will talk about a choreography what went wrong and all the rest that happened as well as your question answers and thank you for watching this is anjali who is a much better stronger and happier person today and i don't regret anything and um yeah that's it so hope you guys loved watching and i loved the experience and i also love where i am today and it was all worth it so thank you guys stay tuned for part 2 and love you bye